And here it's the same type of problem. Find the density of an object, but with a slightly different angle on the whole thing. Let's assume that we have a scale. We put a cup with some water on it, and it measures the total weight of that cup and water as 100 newtons. Now we take an object that we measured in air first and found out the weight to be 25 newtons, and then we hang it on a string and submerge it from the string into that uh, cup. And in this case, it wasn't water. We made it oil so that the density is a little bit less than it is what it is for water. And then, of course, when you put the, the block in there, there is going to be a buoyancy force pushing up against the block, and then in turn, that buoyancy force will cause additional force to be pushed down onto the scale. Remember Newton's second law for every action is an equal and opposite reaction, which means that the reading on the scale will now have increased to 102 Newtons. And it turns out that the buoyancy force simply is the difference between those two readings. So in this case, we can say that the buoyancy force is equal to 2 Newtons. All right, so now we need to find the density. And we can say that the density is equal to the uh, mass divided by the volume, and so we need to find the volume. And again, the volume can be found by saying that the buoyancy force also is equal to the weight of the displaced liquid. Okay, and so the weight can be written as m times g, so this is the mass times g of the displaced liquid, and of course, using the definition of density, we can say that the mass is equal to the density times the volume. Plug that in here, and so this is equal to the density times the volume times g. So the buoyancy force is equal to the density of the displaced liquid, the volume of the displaced liquid times acceleration due to gravity. And it also, of course, means that the volume of the, of the displaced liquid is equal to the volume of the object. And that's what we're trying to find, because to find the density, we need to know the mass and the volume. The mass can be found from this, but the volume has to be found from Archimedes' principle. So we have the buoyancy force is equal to the density of the liquid times the volume of the liquid, which is also the volume of the object, times g. So we're going to solve this equation for v, which is equal to the buoyancy force, divided by the density times g. The buoyancy force is 2 newtons. The density of the liquid is 800 kilograms per cubic meters. The g is still 9.8 meters per second squared. And that will give us the volume of the object. So let's figure out what that is. It's 2 divided by 800 divided by 9.8. And we get 2.55, 2.55 times 10 to the minus 4. And of course, that would be cubic meters because we're finding the volume. And then to use this equation right here to find the density, we can say the density is equal to the mass divided by the volume, the volume that we just found. But to find the mass here, we have to say that the weight is equal to the mass times g, or the mass is equal to the weight divided by g. So that means that this is equal to the weight of the object in air divided by g, divided by the volume. Plug in the numbers that we have. We have 25 newtons for the weight, divided by 9.8 meters per second squared. And then take the whole thing and divide it by the volume, which we just found, which is 2.55 times 10 to the minus 4. And let's see what that gives us. So take the inverse of that. Oh, just to be complete, I should put down the units. There we go. So we take the inverse times 25 divided by 9.8, and I get 10,000. So the density is equal to 10,000 kilogram per cubic meter. Hmm, what has a density of 10,000 kilograms per cubic meter? Silver is pretty close, so maybe it's a little cube of silver. Who knows? Anyway, that's how you do that. Again, same principle. The buoyancy force, by definition, is the weight of the displaced liquid, which allows us to find the volume of the object submerged. And that's how you do that.